Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess Alexandria from Bahati Life. You guys already know, your family at this point. I don't have to introduce myself. I do wanna say really quickly, sorry for the crappy quality of this camera. While I was traveling to St. Pete, which is where I currently am right now, my camera was sitting in my bag and right before I put it in my purse, I told myself to put the case on it, but the case was stuck to my tripod, so I was like, no, I'll be fine. Now, intuitively, I knew better than to um, you know, travel without the case on my camera, especially because as I was traveling, Mercury's retrograde, the risk of events happening with electronics and those types of things is so high, especially during travel because Mercury rules travel. And of course, lo and behold, um, a bottle of water spilled all over my camera and the thing won't turn on. So, I mean, it will turn on, but the, the screen, I can't see through it, so I can't actually film and it doesn't have like one of those see-through lenses. So, sorry guys for the quality of this camera at the, at the moment. I'm using my phone to film, but I figured you guys wouldn't mind too much. Like I said before, I am in St. Pete. I'm leaving tomorrow, but I wanted to come on here and do an intuitive reading share and just energy share for this week. I wanted to, you guys already know, like I'll start off with a meditation in the morning. So 22 minutes of meditation and then I'll pull cards, which I did do, but I was looking at the cards and this was more something that I wanted to talk to you guys about versus me just kind of putting a video out there or me putting um, a, a post up on my Instagram and then just letting you read it. I wanted to kind of talk it through with you and I figured that this would be just a chance for us to kind of like hang out and talk. And then I guess while we're at it, we might as well talk about the week ahead. So um, just before I get started, I do wanna ask you guys, you know, to comment down below and think about this past weekend. So it's Monday that I'm filming this, but think about uh, sat Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today and tell me your experiences because we're just coming off of the Gemini full moon and the full moon as if you are a follower if you're part of the Bahati vibe tribe you, you you know that I was saying that I was getting like conflicting feelings about it like I couldn't tell if it was gonna be something that was gonna be really positive and feel really good for everyone in fact when I was looking at it, I felt like there is two sides to it. Either it would be really positive for some or kind of conflicting for others. So I wanna hear your experiences with that. How did that full moon, how did that fare for you? How did you fare during that full moon? And then also, Sun conjunct Jupiter is technically exact today, Monday, but we have felt it or started to feel it Sunday and Saturday and a little bit of Friday. And we're gonna feel it today, Monday, and Tuesday. Now, Sun conjunct Jupiter does not always promise positive outcomes. It doesn't always pro promise this, these good feelings. Although, Sun represents our life energy and Jupiter represents abundance and expansion. So when the two come together, it would logically make sense that these things would, that this conjunction would create this, you know, overabundance of positive energy and overzealous and optimism and but at the same time you guys know there's two sides to every coin and it doesn't always promise a, an end result that feels good in the moment in fact for some people they can miss these opportunities that present themselves because their these feelings are so good or they're lazy or they're like oh you know I deserve this and then the, the opportunity comes up and it keeps going so um, for, for the sake of me as an astrologer, you know, it's, over, it's been over 10 years now and I'm still learning so much still to this day. I study astrology every single day. I'm pulling charts every single day and I know that this is going to be a continuing process, learning journey for me. I always learn every single day. So what helps me is to pull charts for my clients, to continue to pull charts for myself to put myself in circumstances and different events and ask you guys what happens to you so that I can get an idea of how things kind of fall into place. So what I want to ask you to do is to um, include your sun sign and your, especially your rising sign if you know it and how you felt during the full moon. If there's any special events that happened to you that stand out to you, whether it be something that you thought was gonna happen that happened or you didn't know was gonna happen. Did it feel good for you even as Sun conjunct Jupiter? 
Um, yeah, and some of you I might actually reach out and ask for a little bit additional information, meaning like your birth chart, and I'll do um, somewhat of a reading for you just for my own personal research and I'll try my best to explain it but don't expect a full reading because again this is total 100% research on my end but I, I can see myself reaching out to some of you guys and asking okay you know when this happened you know can I have your chart just because I need to see your natal chart in order for me to better understand so thank you guys so much for that if you're willing to participate leave those comments down below so I can continue to do my research that being said on the 26th is the day today's the 26th I believe let me see yeah today's the 26th that's when the Sun conjuncts Jupiter and again Jupiter represents abundance expansion blessings it's the guru it's heightened you know enlightenment it's you know this connection to the divine it's finding these answers within yourself and then the Sun represents our life energy our ego and when the two of them come together it can create you know this feeling of anything is possible and it's true I really believe that anything truly is um, is is possible so this could usher in after the energy of the full moon these messages things that we need to hear conversations that need to be had but there's two sides to everything especially with Gemini Gemini is like the polarities the twins so it, it's hard to see where this is going to how this is going to unfold how this is going to manifest itself so we'll keep an eye out for that the thing that is Con concerning for me is Mercury ruling our communication, ruling our thoughts and the things that we say and the things that we hear squares off with Mars. Mars falling in the sign of Pisces. Now Mars is action, drive, and ambition and Mars wants to shoot forward like you guys have seen me talk about in our Astro Live chats. But when Mars is currently moving through Pisces, the direction of Mars and his ability to move forward with direction and purpose is a little bit distracted. It's, like I said before, it's this metaphor of kind of walking through this fun house. You don't know what it is that you're looking at, especially with Mercury retrograde. How things appear is not how they are. Neptune only just recently went direct after being retrograde since like June. And this creates again this illusion, this fantasy, this cloud in front of our eyes, which is, you know, what is this? What, what is my purpose? What do I love? Who am I? What is my identity? Where am I going? All of these things can be really difficult to, to see clearly because all of these planets are in foggy conditions, foggy states. And this is how we're ending this year. But what I can say is that energetically it feels like something is kind of coming to cum culmination, something's coming to completion that has already been in progress and it's triggered by the full moon. And I said this in our last Astro Live chat. So again, that was why I was just like, you know, I'm a little nervous about this full moon because I don't know how it's going to unfold for some people. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you've been putting so much work and energy and effort into something in an area of your life and it almost seems like during the full moon, you are going to see what the outcome of that will be. At least if you haven't seen it now, it's almost kind of cementing itself or almost kind of revealing itself. It's still revealing itself. So some of you guys may have gotten news already and a confirmation or clarification and some of you some of you like the other 50% are still waiting and know that something's on the horizon you can feel it in your gut you can feel it in your heart you can feel it in your stomach and in your in your intuition and it kind of makes you nervous it kind of makes you wonder okay like what's gonna happen where are we going with this you know you know I just hope that you know you're not like me and you're not someone who worries I'm a Virgo ruled by Mercury so Virgo wants to know Virgo wants to communicate Virgo wants to understand so to be stuck in a state of limbo is, is kind of weird, you know, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. The other thing is that on the 27th, which is Tuesday, Sun conjuncts um, Mercury, Mercury moving through the sign of Sagittarius. And this could really bring in that information, like a, a, a good conversation that needs to be had. Again, set intention this week that any conversations, any dialogue, anything that, anything that you hear, let it be for your highest and greatest good, like please. Let it be for your highest and greatest good. Let people speak the truth. Let them speak with clarity. Let them speak from their heart. And then at the same time, let's be open to hearing them. Let's be open to listening them, not listening to them with the intent with the with the intent to understand them. So I really want this energy to like and again, Sagittarius. There's a lot of Sagittarius energy, which means I need to open my mind. I need to open my perspective. I need to look at things from the greater good. I don't need to zero in on this one thing that this person said or this one thing that is happening. I need to look at the greater picture and that can be really hard for some people. So, and also anything that comes in, 
it may be totally different than what it is that you're used to, what it is that you're accustomed to. But just because it's different doesn't mean that you should say no to it. If anything, you should be open to it because there's something there. There's something to teach you different. There's something to expose you to different. And that's going to be, that's what really concerns me is it almost seems like for some people, the answer for them might be an instant no simply because they're uncomfortable with this new energy, this new territory. Now, I believe in divine timing. And this is the one of the cards that it is that I pulled, divine timing from the healing with the angels. Excuse me. Um, I think it's Doreen Virtue's cards, but I'll link them all down below. But I believe that everything happens for a reason, and this card showed up this for us this week. And divine timing, that means that everything happens exactly as it should. Even things that it's like, oh, if I would have done this differently, would it would I have a different result? Maybe, but it wasn't meant to be that way. You know, we can go, we can look back and say, if I would have done this, or if I would have turned here, if I would have said this, if I would have done this, it would have been different. Yes, it would have. But just because it would have been different doesn't mean that that's how you should have gone. Even if you're uncomfortable, or even if you're not happy with the outcome, it's exactly how it's supposed to be. That's divine timing. Everything happens for a reason. I just looked at the clock. It was 11-11. At least the, the timer of this thing. So, yeah, like... I'm just concerned again, like for the sake of me being a Virgo and looking at the detail and I'm going to totally contradict myself because I'm literally telling you guys to keep your mind open and keep your perspective open. But I'm just, again, this is me being human. Like even I struggle with these things, which is, you know what, we can't just narrow in on the nitty gritty of everything. We have to look at things from a greater perspective. And this perspective, this, this mind expansion, this way of looking at things is going to help you to step into uncharted territory that actually could really be good for you. And instead of saying no to it, be open to it. In fact, these are some of the cards that it is that I pulled up. So we have the Wheel of Fortune. And this deck that I'm pulling from, I believe is called the Ancestor Tarot, I believe, which I've been loving. It's my mom's deck and I have, I brought my deck but um, while I was traveling, but of course while I was traveling, the water spilled on my tarot, so I had to let it dry out, and then I was using this, and I really fell in love with it. So everything happens for a reason, divine timing. But the Wheel of Fortune came out, which again shows this change in circumstances. Now, I can't say to you that this circumstance is going to feel good, feel exciting, even, at, uh -huh. even with Sun conjunct Jupiter trying to surge into your life these positive feelings again we have to look at the natal chart how's the natal chart look how does this person naturally react to certain stuff are you normally comfortable with things are you normally uncomfortable with with change um, all these things need to be taken into consideration but anyways wheel of fortune shows again this change of circumstances that things are happening with this cycle and everything is faded everything is karmic the wheel of fortune is always connected to karma and destiny and things happening outside of our control, but in the control of the divine, meaning that everything happens for a reason. So there's that. The four of, um, this is four of sacred circles, but in reality, it's the four of pentacles. And basically, this is a person who's just like, you know what, right where I'm at right now is probably where I am back. Ooh. Oh, finally, I've been trying to get this seat to like sit back and it finally did, but okay. Um, four of sacred circles or four of pentacles is like a person who is happy with the status quo and they're really not trying to budge. They don't want to move. In fact, they might need some time for themselves. In a lot of ways, they might need some time for themselves and let it be selfish. You know, people are allowed to be selfish. People are allowed to be stubborn. Let them be stubborn. Again, everything happens exactly as it should. So you can't force someone to do anything that they don't want to do. You can't force anyone to do you know anything if they, they ultimately people have their own path they have their own choices to make whether that whether you see things better for them or not they have to ultimately come to the decision themselves ace of wands well technically this is ace of staves has also shown up for this week and this is this energy this surge of excitement and passion and this new enterprise this new event this new door that could open and you feel it within you it's like oh my god this is so exciting this is so exciting um, but again, with excitement can come nervousness, it can come fear, can come, fear comes with it. And that's again, because these feelings of, you know what, I need to get out and explore, I need to do this uncharted territory. For some of you guys, that might be travel, that might be education, that might be a new spiritual journey. It might be taking a new path with a new person. It might be taking a new step in your relationship. It might be connecting with new friends, signing up for a new class, but it's something that excites you. 
you should not say no to things that excite you things that spark that interest and spark that passion and in a lot of ways that's also sexual energy because wands is very sexual and a lot of, in our society sometimes we look at these sexual things and be like you know sex is bad or this desire is, is bad no this is showing you oh thank you sorry this is showing you that there's something here that there's something budding here and it's okay to say yes to that it's society that has taught us that desire sex intimacy attraction that those things are bad when in reality this is the universe saying look here you know try this you know unless you're committed to something you know what i mean like this isn't me saying you know step outside of your you know if you're committed and you've made a promise to someone you should never you know take take back on that unless and if that's the case have an honest conversation with them but um ace of wands again shows you know where's the excitement coming from follow the excitement instead of trying to understand it and manipulate it just go with the flow of it and that's the other thing too the card that pulled up is playfulness what is it that brings you joy what is it that makes you happy what is it that lights you up jupiter again is all about joy and fun and expansion and trying and overdoing it in a lot of ways and because jupiter always wants to blow things totally to the next level so instead of you restricting yourself this isn't saturn We've gone through Saturn energy. All of this year, for the most of this year, we were dealing with Saturn, restricting and holding us back. Now Jupiter comes in and says, don't hold yourself back anymore. Please, like, go out, explore, have fun, try this. You know what? Yes, you don't know what's on the horizon. You don't know what it's going to look like. But you have to go out and you have to try. And you have to have faith. You have to have faith in yourself. You have to put yourself out there. If it feels good, do it. Jupiter rules faith. Jupiter rules the, that area of the un, unknown that's connected to you know what I'm gonna do it for the sake of adventure I'm gonna do it for the sake of exploration I'm gonna do it for the sake of me learning that's what Jupiter brings and none of these things can be told to you these are things that you have to find out for yourself that's why so many people are four of Pentacles are working with the four of Pentacles because they have to they're very solid they just they're just like I'm not gonna do that that way because I need to do it this way because this is for me this is how I want to do it. And you have to do the same thing for you. Now, again, Eight of Swords is here. And the Eight of Swords, again, I love these, the image images of these cards because this shows, again, this woman kind of like hiding back. It's because she's nervous and she's scared and she's uncertain. I don't know what's ahead of me. I don't know what the future is. And, you know, your brain sometimes thinks of all the things that can go wrong. Um, even, even all the things that could go right, it still sometimes has a tendency to focus on, yeah, but this, but what if, but what if, but what if. Yeah, you're right, what if. What if? Everything happens though, you guys. Remember again, like divine timing. You can change the circumstances by just focusing on the good in it and focusing on what is right and what is good and what it is that you're learning right now. Even with my move to New Orleans, I've been saying a lot, being very honest about my feelings of, you know what, you know, it, this is something that I've been wanting to do, but, and I'm excited to do it and I'm gonna do it, but in all honesty, I'm scared about it and I'm nervous because the unknown, but it's just like, you know, what is it? What is it that New Orleans can bring to me? It's, you know, who knows? But at the end of the day, like, I can create my circumstances. And again, it's this tendency in my head as a Virgo to not make mistakes. You know, I, I'm, in, I'm an intuitive. I believe in following my intuition. I believe in following my feelings and also matching logic with that, which I could use, you know, some more logic, I guess, more concrete reasoning. You know who knows but at the end of the day it's like I can create my experiences but in order for me to do that I have to not let the eight of swords take control and the eight of swords is you know all mind over matter it's you know your brain can make the worst of things or make the best of things that being said the Empress Empress was the next card and that's just like be open to receive I was thinking about this yesterday I really was thinking about this yesterday and it's like as women if you look at women's empowerment um, Instagrams and our messages for women's empowerment so much of these energies are telling us to go within to focus on ourselves to take care of ourselves because as women we're so accustomed and so wired to give to give to give to give to give to the point where we compromise we over exalt ourselves and men masculine energy is all about kind of dominating and they just kind of they don't give as in the same way that we do so or feminine energy and feminine energy needs to be about receiving in a lot of ways. And even though our natural instinct is to give, to give, to nurture, to check in, to 
touch, you know, and, and to be there to help fix it. And in reality, it's like, we have to step into that Empress energy, which is you have to make yourself a priority. You have to take care of yourself. You have to fill your cup. That's why, again, you know, all of this energy is telling us like self-care, make time for you. Think about what you want. What is it going that is going to abundantly fill your garden? Take care of yourself. Self-soothe. Be selfish. Focus on what you want. Focus on your journey. Focus on what makes you passionate. Instead of neglecting yourself, instead of saying, oh no, I can't, or committing yourself to something and over giving, giving so much of yourself to that one thing and to the point where you neglect yourself, it's like, you know what? Make time for play for you again. This is divine timing. This is the time for you to make, for, for you to focus on your playfulness, your joy. The things that, and this is so important. We get so caught up on, okay, this needs to be this way. This is my work. This is what is my obligation to the point where we ignore our fun. We ignore our joy. And then we wonder why we have all these things accomplished. We've done all these things, but at the end of the day, we're not happy. It is so important to make sure that we have joy and pleasure in our lives instead of us saying no to these, these things that are there to make us happy. So that's what it is that I see on the 27th, Mercury conjuncts Jupiter. Again, this is another conversation. On the 27th, Sun conjuncts Mercury. Um, so all of this thing is about our mind, how we're talking, the words that we're hearing. Again, I keep wanting to say like, as much as you're talking, talk and speaking from the heart, speaking from the heart, be open to listening and not just listening and pretending to listen. Hear what another person is saying and try to understand their perspective. Perspective is another thing too because Sagittarius is again changing your perspective and seeing things from a different way. I'm surprised that the, the hanged man didn't show up for this for this reading this week, but everything happens for a reason. But the hangman again is looking at things from a different perspective, but also still being strung up. And I think the reason why the hangman didn't show up is because you still have the power to create and to change your outcome versus the hangman's like let go of your power, release control. You know what I mean? Now it almost seems like we're commanding it, we're speaking it, we're calling it in, we're doing something with it. Venus enters into the sign of Scorpio on the 2nd, on December. This is very passionate, this is very intense, but this is going to help people to connect again with their heart's truest desires and not hold anything back when it comes to that. Mercury retrograde, you know, Mercury's still moving back and then this is like where we kind of move into, you know, this, oh, I need to go out to explore and to back into, you know what, I want to work on this. I want to find out what the meat is, what the meat is here and develop something of substance here and let's connect let's re let's reconnect and and see what we have here and what we can you know communicate and what we can build with this and that's all mercury you know when you hear this reconnection recommitment uh, connection with the, the you know a, a conversation that you had from the past that you now have to have again in this present moment it's almost like rewind but that's because mercury retrograde is the repeat it's you know, go back to square one and try again. So that's the energy that it is that I see for this week, you guys. Again, let me know in the comments how it is that you're faring during all of this. You know, how do you feel? What has come in? What is happening? I've been watching a lot of your comments in my past videos. So go back to the Astro Live chat and revisit that because you'll see how the energy kind of changed and shifted itself and how it's manifesting now or how it has manifested and then for the sake of me doing research i'm being very selfish but um you know asking you know you guys to contribute to my my own personal studies but you can contributing your insight and your experiences is going to ultimately benefit you because eventually we're going to do a reading together if we haven't already <laughs> so again it all helps me to be a better astrologer. 10 years and I still learn so much every day. It's probably been more than 10 years now. I'll do the math later, but you know, tomato, tomato, neither here nor there. If it's 10 years and I've got 10 more to go, and astrology is my passion and, and my life, so it is what it is. All right, you guys, I'll see you in my next video. I'll talk to you soon, bye.